Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here my name's Alexa Ray. For today's video we are doing another reading vlog of course obviously when are we not doing reading vlogs when are we not reading on this channel and you guys already know by the title the thumbnail we're finally doing it we are finally reading the inheritance games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes I'm so excited to read this this cover is beautiful and just everything the inheritance games guys this is literally everywhere this is on TikTok Instagram YouTube I'm really excited I hear a lot of good things about this this is a book series this is book one I out of three as of right now I think book two is out book three is coming out later this year I think in like August the average book rating for this on Goodreads is 4.24 stars Goodreads describes it as a Cinderella story with deadly stakes and thrilling twists which we love it's supposed to be like a mystery thriller romance I think secret passages elaborate riddles and billions at stake Avery Grimms has a plan for a better future survive high school win a scholarship and get out but her luck changes in an instant when billionaire Tobias Hawthorne dies and leaves her virtually his entire fortune. The only catch, Avery must move into a sprawling mansion full of secret passages, riddles, and codes. Unfortunately for Avery, Hawthorne House is also occupied by the family that was just disinherited. This includes the four Hawthorne grandsons, dangerous magnetic boys who grew up with every expectation that one day they would inherit billions. Can you imagine like you think you're in line to inherit this money and then you just don't? It just goes to some person, some stranger? What? Heir apparent, Grace is convinced that Avery is a con woman and he's determined to take her down, but his brother Jameson views her as their grandfather's last hurrah. A twisted riddle, a puzzle to be solved. Caught in a world of wealth and privilege with danger around every turn, Avery will have to play the game herself just to survive. Oh, it's so, so good. So do we think Grayson or Jameson is going to be the love interest? I have bets on Grayson. I think it's just because I really like his name, Grayson. That's a really good name. <laughs> but with all that being said, we're going to jump right into this reading vlog. We're going to jump right in to the inheritance games see what happens with Avery Grahams with Grayson let's just hop into it I just wanted to take a quick second to thank the sponsor of today's video which is flexi spot being that I work from home and I'm always on my laptop between YouTube and being a college student I'm always sitting at my desk one of the main things I always preach on my channel is that it is so important to have a clean and happy space to work at especially if you work from home it makes you feel more productive it makes you happy with that being said I want to say thank you so much to Flexi Spot for sponsoring today's video. If you're not familiar with this amazing brand, we're about to get very familiar with it. Flexi Spot specializes in at-home desks, but the best part about their desks is that they're adjustable in height and they can turn into standing desks. I am absolutely obsessed with because I am such an antsy person, guys. I'm constantly moving throughout the day. So the beauty of Flexi Spot is that their desks are adjustable in height and they can turn into full-on standing desk. I'm so incredibly grateful for Flexi Spot for gifting me one of their standing desks. I just picked out the Flexi Spot Kamhar all-in-one standing desk in the color white. It is so beautiful guys. The quality is amazing. The desk is the perfect size too. It's not too big but it's not too small. It fits everything I need and there's even leftover room for me to be writing and reading while having all my other stuff out. As I mentioned you can change the height of the desk to higher or lower depending on your height and what you're comfortable with. You can change it whenever you want just using the arrows on it. There's also a memory preset function on it so you can actually save the heights of the desk at certain points and instead of pressing the up and down button for a few minutes to get it to that height you can just press the preset and it will automatically go up or down to the height you pick. Right next to the buttons and the preset function is also USB ports. When I thought this desk couldn't get any better I was absolutely blown away when I saw that it had USB ports. It is so nice and easy and convenient convenient to have ports right on the desk. It takes up so much less space. You don't have to worry about having an extra outlet around to plug your phone in. And there's also not like a bunch of cords under my desk that's getting like all tangled up. I'm currently using it to charge my phone, but earlier I had my AirPods plugged in and it was just amazing. The desk also has a drawer in it and it is so sleek and clean looking that I didn't even know there was a drawer in it to begin with. It is really big and spacious. I can fit my books in there, my laptop, my iPad. There's also 
also a cute little pencil tray right in the front of it that you can put pens and pencils in. I thought that was such a cute and useful feature. Overall, I'm so happy and obsessed with this desk. It really makes working from home so much easier. If you happen to be in the market for the perfect desk, you can use my link down below and check out all the different desks that FlexiSpot offers and you can also get $30 off your purchase. Thank you so much again to FlexiSpot for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to the reading vlog. Okay guys, we are gonna jump right into the inheritance games. I'm so, so excited. I also just wanna put like a little disclaimer here because I know I don't always put disclaimers in my videos. This is going to be a spoiler free reading vlog. If you haven't read the book yet, this is totally safe to watch with me. I'm not gonna give away any major spoilers or plot twist of this book. I'm just simply going to be showing my raw reactions to things and talking a little bit about some of the characters. We are gonna jump right in. We are only on page three and <laughs> so much I feel like is happening that I'm just like wow this is the first chapter and it's kind of just giving us an insight into who Avery Grams is and her family and basically like what she's gone through throughout her life I'm at the part right now where she's in school and she's actually getting challenged by her professor and principal she got a hundred on a test that nobody ever gets a hundred on and it's specifically designed for students not to get a hundred on which like doesn't make sense like why would you make a test that your students couldn't succeed at I get it like to challenge them but like no one could ever get a hundred on it like that just doesn't make sense to me so the principal says mr yates intentionally creates exams that challenge the abilities of his students in 20 years he's never given a perfect score do you see the problem why would you do that why would you do that as a teacher it just seems like the principal's kind of like being annoying. Hey, so Avery has an older sister named Libby. They're like half sisters. They share a dad, but not the same mom. Looks like Avery's staying with Libby at the moment. And Libby's boyfriend, Drake, not a fan favorite. He seems kind of like a really big jerk, an anger issue. So I don't know how to feel about him. And it seems like Libby is like a people pleaser. She wants to say yes to everyone and make sure everyone likes her and is okay. We just met Maxine too. Maxine is Avery's best friend, but she lives like far away. It's also just like a weird scene in the book, but like Avery's like technically living out of her car right now. I feel like we can come to the conclusion that she's not exactly living like the best life. She's not well off. She doesn't really have money or anything. She does have really big goals and dreams. She wants to go to school and do something with her life, but she also seems like she has like a really big heart for people and she wants to help others. Okay, Grayson Hawthorne has entered the chat kind of gives me i don't know if this is like correlated it probably isn't at all but it kind of gives me christian gray vibes but i just think it's a coincidence that his name is Grayson and he's all fancy and wearing suits and stuff and talking super sophisticated when he's only 19 years old. So just a thought. Grayson has sought out Avery at her school. She is mentioned in his grandfather's will and the will cannot be read unless everyone is there. Grayson is there to retrieve Avery to bring her back to Hawthorne House and have the will read. We totally know where this is going going okay so libby's on the same page as we are she already knows that avery's gonna get left like a ton of money they just don't know how much yet i almost wonder if like she's related to him maybe like maybe she's a hawthorne because avery keeps recalling a memory she has with her mom and her mom told her that she has a big secret about the day avery was born so i almost wonder if it pertains to the hawthorns in any way so avery and libby have arrived at hawthorne house they first meet a Alyssa, who is like the lawyer of the Hawthorns, I think. And Nash, who is one of the brothers. He's the eldest. He gives me cowboy vibes. But also, and this might be out there, kind of is hitting on Libby in a way. But now we've met Grayson Hawthorne and Nash Hawthorne. We have two more brothers to go and they've arrived at Hawthorne House. Okay, we have now met Alexander, aka Xander. He is the youngest brother in the group. He just came out of a class and told Avery that it's a secret passage and they're all over the house. So Sky Hawthorne is the mother of the boys. She has just introduced herself to Avery. Doesn't seem too crazy just yet. They're all gathering now in the great room to read the will. So I feel like after we read the will, that's when the story's really gonna start and get crazy. 
it's happening about to happen they're about to be told that all the money goes to avery the two sisters zara and sky are like getting in a weird argument right now zara's kind of aggressive and so is her husband i'm kind of like skeptical about her right now it happened. The remainder of my estate, Mr. Ortega read, including all properties, monetary assets, and worldly possessions not otherwise specified, I leave to Avery Kylie Grams. This is not gonna go down well. So Avery basically inherited everything. It's not going down too well, and it includes the house. She now owns the entire Hawthorne house, which they all live in. She also has security now, who is Oren. He's like her personal security guard, and he basically goes with her everywhere now to ensure her safety, which I feel like is something she needs right now because I don't think the family's taking this too well. Okay, we've also hit the part in the book where Grayson is a assuming that Avery's like a con woman and that she conned all this money out of Tobias Hawthorne. And then to top it all off, Tobias Hawthorne left four grandsons and Avery a letter. This is so wild. Of course, Drake is here to stir the pot and make matters worse. Since Avery has now just inherited billions, she is being swarmed with paparazzi and all these news sources that just want to know who she is, why she's so special, why did Tobias Hawthorne leave her, all this stuff. Avery has to move into Hawthorne House, otherwise the will just is void and she doesn't get anything. All of the money and assets would go towards charity, so even his family wouldn't get anything. So technically, like, regardless of, like, what the family thinks Avery did to get the money they were disinherited no matter what because Tobias Hawthorne was going to either send everything to charity or give it to Avery but anyway she's moving into Hawthorne house we're in chapter 15 Orin is giving her like the rundown of security of the house kind of just assuring her that she's safe also Nash was supposed to be like long gone by now because after the will was read he was just gonna take off and go do his own thing because he really doesn't care about the will or the money or anything he's kind of like like a free spirit but he's at the house i think it's like a huge hunch for me to say this but i feel like he has a thing for libby i don't know i just i feel like that so zara and her husband are a bit sneaky and they're actually running a dna test on avery to see if she's related to the hawthorns so now they're kind of discussing the idea of of like what if avery is a hawthorn but in a way i almost feel like she's not a hawthorn i feel like that'd just be too easy i feel like there's just something deeper to it jameson hawthorn has entered the chat i don't know guys i don't know what to think jameson gives me like this really weird vibe now like a bad way but like i don't know i like him but i'm kind of like nervous about him i'm finishing up chapter 19 now and it ends with jameson leaving avery's room and heading back into the secret passage before he leaves he tells her he left you the fortune avery and all he left us is you so jameson totally thinks that this is a part of like a bigger puzzle that his grandfather left behind for them to figure out so she's at the prep school and she's met Thea. Thea kind of gives me like mean girl vibes slash two-faced vibes. I don't entirely trust her, but I feel like it's too early on to exactly judge her. But I'm at the end of chapter 24 and it ends with Thea talking to Avery and she says, think what you want about me, she said. But the last girl at the school who got tangled up with the Hawthorne brothers, the last girl who spent hour after hour in that house. What? Guys, we need to talk about Jameson Hawthorne. He is just like in your face. Basically him and Avery have like teamed up during this whole mystery slash puzzle deal. They're trying to figure it out, solve it together. And I just feel like the entire time Jameson is like so flirtatious with Avery. Sometimes I'm just like, is this really happening? He brought his lips right next to my ear. This isn't the only library in Hawthorne house. And it's just so weird and kind of cringy. Why do you have to get so close? So now we're back to Avery and Grayson. Grayson thinks that Avery's a con woman and so he's like doing like a thorough background check on her. But now Avery's getting annoyed with it because she's like, I'm obviously not a con woman. Like I didn't do this. Grayson's like, stay away from my family, Miss Grams. He always addresses her by Miss Grams, never by like Avery. Or like Jameson calls her mystery girl and heiress. Enemies to lovers? I don't know. So Avery and Jameson, like I said earlier, have like teamed up. Grayson though has inserted himself into this whole like dynamic duo. I can't tell if Jameson likes Avery 
Avery, if Grayson likes Avery, if they're both using her. But I do know that they are making like a good dent into this whole mystery. Okay, I really adore Nash Hawthorne, but I just feel like he's a little too straightforward sometimes. He's basically telling Avery to like watch out between Jameson and Grayson. And Nash basically is telling Avery that she's either the glass ballerina or the knife in all of this. I don't know. Oh my God. Now all of a sudden I feel like I'm team Grayson. I feel like Grayson and Avery actually have a lot in common and they kind of want to do the same thing when it comes to helping people. So they're kind of having this bonding moment right now. And like Avery's trying to tell herself like stay away from both of them, but you kind of know that she doesn't want to in a way. Okay, so I am 100% sure that Nash has a thing for Libby. He just has like this savior complex and he's super overprotective of Libby specifically right now Tobias Hawthorne the second what it's getting so intense right now guys Jameson and Avery are in the woods finding out another clue for the puzzle and someone is threatening them Orin is rushing Avery and Jameson to a safe place it's just getting so wild and crazy right now what and now I like don't know how to feel about Jameson like what just happened what just happened and why am I leaning towards Grayson now and why do I feel like all my theories about what's going to happen are just totally out the window guys we're on chapter 68 and it is just getting crazier basically Orin and Alyssa set up like this whole arrangement to find out who the threat is towards Avery it is like a high speed car chase right now these boys have issues just not what I expected at all from this this story really makes you feel bad for Jameson and Grayson because they were definitely put against each other and played against each other okay so Xander is helping Avery. Xander's helping Avery right now and trying to lead her to the final clue because Jameson has kind of like called it quit and she can't find Grayson. So what is he doing then helping her if he wants to win? There's no way this is like the reason for her inheriting the money. There's no way it ends like this. Avery and Xander are still working hard to figure out the mystery. They didn't give up just at the date. They believe there's something more to it, which I'm so happy because I think there is too. I love that Xander's like helping Avery because all the other brothers have given up now. They just don't want any part of it. I knew it. This makes me so happy. It didn't matter which one of us found this place. Without you, we wouldn't have been able to get past the wall. The truth is coming out and I am full on Team Grayson. The packet of sugar. But I still feel like there's so much more to it. Like there's no way it's just, it's just this one meeting. Oh my gosh, Harry. I freaking knew it. Okay guys, we've come to the end of this reading vlog. We have finished The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Oh my gosh, just oh wow. So the next few minutes of this video are going to be like a spoiler section part of it. If you haven't read this book yet, skip ahead so nothing gets spoiled for you. So we are gonna hop right into the spoiler section. I don't even know where to begin with this. First off, I just wanna say in the beginning of this book, when we were introduced to Harry as a homeless man, I like had a weird feeling. I was like, Harry's gonna come into this somehow. He's going to mean something in this story. When I read the final page of this, I literally like fell to the ground. I'm just like in total shock that Harry is Toby. Just what a huge twist at the end. Aside from the biggest plot twist in all of this, I think I wanna talk about Jameson and Grayson a little bit and the whole Emily thing. I thought the Emily thing was totally whack and she definitely manipulated these poor poor boys into like playing a game with her. I just thought that whole part was twisted and I think it's so sad how they kind of blamed themselves for her death. The whole thing was just so weird and messy I feel like. I think Jameson was too invested and involved with the game and when he kissed Avery it shouldn't have been their first kiss. Like I feel like it was the wrong time. But then Grayson on the other hand I really liked Grayson's like overprotectiveness and how he kind of just like wanted to take care of Avery the whole time.
time. I hate how at the end he's like, I can't be with you because I see the way Jameson looks at you. I thought it was a shock that Sky was behind the whole shooting incident, but at the same time, I wasn't as surprised. Like Avery had mentioned how she thought it would have been Zara because Zara was so like aggressive towards her, but I'm not really that surprised that it was Sky because I feel like they were both really angry the entire book. I think the whole Drake and Libby thing is so like twisted and I don't like Drake and I really hope in the next book that Libby doesn't like go back to him. I'm kind of nervous about what's gonna happen in book two. But going to Libby, I love that Nash is like being protective over her. I think that's like a really cute thing. Nothing really happened between the two of them, but we were kind of getting like subtle hints that something was happening. I just really liked that whole dynamic of the story. That is all for my little spoiler section. I didn't want to talk too much about it just because there's so much that happened in this book. I couldn't possibly cover it in the amount of time that's like appropriate in YouTube world. Definitely a five star read from me. I am obsessed. It's one of the best books I have read so far in the year of 2022. I am just so excited to read the next one. I am so excited to read the next one that I immediately went out right after finishing this one and got the second one. Look at this cover. I am so excited. This was a great read. Thank you so much to everyone who recommended me this book. I loved the characters. I loved the storyline of it. As always, don't forget to comment down below any other book recs you have for me. I have a very long list of book recs from you guys, but we are making a pretty good dent in it. Definitely go check this out if you haven't already. Let me know down below what you think about this if you have read it. Let me know down below if you've read The Hawthorne Legacy and what you think about this one. But with all that being said, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up because it really helps me out and it lets me know that you like these types of videos, you like my reading vlogs, my book reviews, and all that book related content. And then of course, don't forget to subscribe down below if you'd like to see more of me. I post weekly, guys. It's basically free entertainment every single week. So you might as well subscribe. Thank you so much again to FlexiSpot for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget you can check out all their cool desks and accessories by clicking my link down below and you can also get money off your first purchase. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you in my next video.